Prior to the discovery of, of insulin, the treatment of diabetes was quite challenging. Uh, people might live a year or two. So th that was a very grim outlook uh, for people with type 1 diabetes. This is a huge discovery, and I, I would suggest to you that it's probably the most important discovery in medicine in the 20th century. But we must celebrate more than simply the discovery of insulin. The current situation with diabetes across the world is that we have a global epidemic. We estimate that half a billion people are living with diabetes across the world today. And IDF predicts that this will increase to probably more than 700 million in the next 20, 25 years or so. The difference that the discovery of therapeutic insulin for people with living with diabetes is that it revolutionized treatment, especially for people with type 1 diabetes. When therapeutic insulin was discovered, type 1 diabetes was untreatable and insulin converted this to a treatable condition. It's hard to imagine that di a diagnosis of diabetes was pre-insulin a death sentence. And it's also hard for many of us to imagine that there are still children with type 1 diabetes in low and middle income countries where a diagnosis of type 1 diabetes remains a death sentence. I was uh, diagnosed at the age of 18 and I'd been having the typical symptoms of diabetes. They put me in the hospital for four days where they brought down my blood sugar. They taught me how to use insulin by injecting in uh, oranges. I, I vividly remember thinking my life was beginning and ending all at the same time. I say that since I started uh, using insulin, I have uh, witnessed um, improvements and that uh, my life has been much better than before I started using insulin in the first two years of my diagnosis. After the discovery of insulin and some of the initial production, uh, insulin uh, became more widely available by 1923. Uh, on January 23rd of 1923, Banting, Best, and Collop were awarded the American patents for insulin, which they then sold to the University of Toronto for the exorbitant price of $1. Uh, and people asked, well, why didn't you cash in on this a little bit more? It's a huge discovery. But Banty reportedly said, insulin belongs to the world, not me. Diabetes, sadly, is responsible for many deaths across the world. And globally, more than 4 million people each year die as a consequence of diabetes. And this is, of course, a, a tragic statistic. So we really need to consider diabetes as a serious condition but if we leave it untreated or poorly treated, it can lead to very serious consequences. In many low and middle income countries, the need for insulin is quite a costly burden for the family and also access to the care that's required for the proper administration of insulin is also lacking in the United States. There are individuals who are not covered by health insurance uh, who really struggle to get the supplies of insulin that they need, not only to uh, maintain good care of their diabetes, but even to survive. Our role is to ensure that people do not go without insulin or other medications that they need for their treatment. We need to mobilize our communities to demand action that results in lasting changes for people living in diabetes and with their family. The main barriers to insulin access are availability and cost, and that's cost both to the health system and also to the individual. It's also not just access to insulin that's important, but also access to the other things that are required for the proper uh, administration of insulin, which uh, does include uh, education, access to the equipment that's required, and also the ongoing monitoring so for the majority of people, it's quite a problem to uh, access uh, enough insulin on a regular basis uh, so that at the end of the day, some people have to go without and some people have to ration their dosages. 
it's still always something that you have in the back of your head that's a lifeline and you need to be able to get it when you need to have it. The things that can be done to increase access to insulin, to my mind, fall into three categories. Expanding donor programs, uh, improving the health system, and then a global and collaborative approach to making insulin more available and more affordable. It's really going to be the technology and these newer insulins that will herald the advances in insulin therapy that we're all so anxious to see. What would I like to see over the next 10 years? Um, I'd like to see diabetes gone, cured. If I could change the future of diabetes care in Zimbabwe, I would start with uh, making sure that there is an improvement uh, in the provision of education and awareness on the condition. Uh, people do not know much about the condition. Even those who are at risk of developing it, they do not know much about it. So they are not able to do anything to prevent it or to delay it. And there are also a lot of misconceptions going about, about the condition. So I would say let's uh, equip people with the knowledge and information about diabetes. I am really hopeful that this centenary of insulin will galvanize people into coordinated action to ensure that this is not a problem beyond the next uh, 10 years or so. Nobody in the world in 2021 should die because they cannot receive the insulin that they need for life. And this is an important message. So it's not only the discovery of insulin, but the availability of insulin and other medications for those people with diabetes that is so important to remember and focus on this world. We should be aiming for a world where people can have access to the medicines they need for their diabetes.